wacky computer guy. I got help from a computer gang. Big Betty and Betty, oh, she knows her thing. Computer Craig sings, he dances, even talks some slang. from Computer Craig. He wants us to try to figure out the definition for the word computer so that all of you kids at home will know what one is. Any ideas on how to explain it, Disket Debbie? Well, I know it's a machine type of thingy and I know that my dad uses it at work every day. All right, that's a good start. I sometimes use them in school and even at home when I do my homework. Okay, so I guess we can say that it is a machine type of thingy that helps with homework and for your job when you are older. Let's use my cell phone to call Computer Craig to tell him. Okay, if you're sure that we have a good definition. I think so. Let me dial him up. Computer Craig? Yes? Hi, it's Disket Debbie. CC Jr. and I got your email about figuring out a definition for the word computer. And I think we've got one. Okay, great. Let's hear it. The definition of the word computer is a machine type of thingy that helps with homework and for your job when you are older. Okay, well, that is true. It is a machine, and it can help with your homework or for your job. But I think we need to just word it a little differently in order for it to be perfect. The definition that I like to use is a computer is the name for any complex machine that processes information. Any complex machine? Pretty much. Even the cell phones that we're using right now are complex machines that process information. The cell phone's a computer? That's right. And in this Computer Craig video, we'll be learning all about types of computers and other computer basics. Okay, bye. Ah, the wonderful world of computers. There are many types of computers. This is called a desktop computer. But it's not the only type of computer that there is. There are laptop computers that can sit right on your lap and you can take them with you wherever you go. There are palm computers that fit in the palm of your hand and there are types of computers that you probably use all the time. Video game systems are computers, calculators are computers, even the cash registers at most grocery stores our computers. Like I said, this one is a desktop computer and this is the type that you'll be learning about from me. So get out your Computer Craig workbooks and get ready to become a computer wizard. Hey there 
Computer Craig here, and I'm ready for another Drill Sergeant Jill Mine Workout. Well, not really. I don't even like the workouts. She makes me do these really hard exercises. She thinks I'm one of her new recruits. I'm not, but I'm afraid to tell her. I'm just hoping she doesn't find me over here. Computer Craig, I sure hope you're not trying to hide from me. Uh, oh, no, sir. I mean... No, ma'am, I would never do that, I promise. Computer Craig, I want to hear the five basic parts of the computer. Drop and give me five. Okay, well, the five basic parts... I said drop and give me five. Okay. The five basic parts of the computer are one, keyboard, two, mouse, three, printer, four, Monitor, five, central processing unit, ma'am! That's better, at ease, soldiers. Hey there, time to jumpstart our learning of the computer. I'm going to explain what I consider the five basic parts of the computer. When I say the name of a computer part, everyone at home, Repeat it after me. First, everyone say, keyboard. Keyboard! A keyboard is the part of the computer that lets us type in information. It has numbers, letters, and symbols on it that give the computer commands. Next, we have the mouse. Everyone say, meows. Meows! The mouse is also a part that gives the computer information. Only instead of typing it, like the keyboard, with the mouse, you just point and click. And that's how the computer gets its commands. Next, we have the monitor. Everyone say, monitor. Monitor. The monitor is a part that displays the text and graphics from the computer. Without the monitor, it'd be like working with your eyes closed. And I know we don't want that. Yes, yes we, we do. do! Yes, we yes, do! We do. So. You do? All right, here we go. Where are we? Hit the lights! Hit the lights! Oh, hit the lights. Oh, hit the lights. Oh, okay, okay. We need the monitor to see what we are doing. I now know that for certain. Next, we have the central processing unit. Everyone say central processing unit. Central Processing Unit! The CPU can either sit on the floor underneath your desk or right on top of your desk under the monitor. The Central Processing Unit is considered the brain of the computer. It doesn't have a brain like a human, but since all the information of the computer is processed through the CPU, Central Processing Unit, it's really similar to a brain. Just remember, computers can't think for themselves. Humans have to always give it instructions for it to follow. But for our purposes, just remember, the CPU is considered the brain of the computer. Can everyone say, brain of the computer? Brain, brain of the, the computer. computer! Last, we have the printer. Can everyone say, printer? Printer! The printer is the part that lets us print out all the text and graphics that we see on our monitor. Basically, it prints out whatever we're working on. Well, that's the five basic parts of the computer. Let's go over them one more time. We have the keyboard. Keyboard! The meows. Meows! The monitor. Monitor! The central processing unit. Central Processing Unit! And the printer. Printer! Now, which one of these parts do you think would be the hardest to remember? The CPU? Me too! The Central Processing Unit is definitely the hardest part to remember. And that's why we sing the Central Processing Unit song. Hit it, guys! Central Processing Unit!
The brain of the computer is the CPU. Central Processing Unit. It lets the PC do what it's got to do. Central Processing Unit. When it does it, I don't have to. Central Processing Unit. It processes info and we say thank you. Central Processing Unit. It's the Central Processing Unit. Samantha and in yes it sure is checking for something the computer is checking to make sure that all of your equipment and programs 
are connected and working properly. It's called booting up. Can you say booting up? Booting up, booting up, booting up. If, for example, your keyboard is not connected to the central processing unit, the computer will know that it's not connected during the booting up process. A message will pop up on the screen and will ask you to check the connection. All you need to do is connect the keyboard and then the computer will finish booting up. Booting up, booting up, booting up. Thank you for your questions, Samantha. And kids at home, if you go to www.computercraig.com, you can send in your own questions for me, Mr. Know It Because, to answer in the next video. That's www.computercraig.com. See you next time. Toodaloo! All right. Now that we've learned the five basic computer parts, let's learn a few more parts and some terms. Or as I like to say, let's party! Get it? Computer parts? Part? Part? T? Part? T? Party! Computer party! Alright! Party! Computer party! Well, maybe you don't want to party, but anyway, once again, when I say the name of the computer part, I want everyone to repeat it after me, alright? First up, digital camera. Everyone say digital camera. Digital, digital camera. camera. The digital camera is a camera just like the ones we've been using for years. Only with a digital camera, instead of storing the pictures on a piece of film, it saves them as files. And since it saves them as files, as soon as you take the picture, you turn it around, look at the screen of the camera, and you decide if you like it or not. If you don't like it, delete it. If you do like it, connect your camera to your computer and print it out or even make changes to it. Next, we have the screen. Everyone say, screen. Screen. When I say screen, I'm referring to the part of the monitor that is the actual part that lets us see the information. It's not the whole thing, it's just right here where you see the blue. That's the screen. It shows us the information. It's not exactly like the screen you'd find in your window or in your door. It's more like a movie screen or a TV screen. Because those two actually show information just like the monitor screen. Next, we have the modem. Everyone say mo dem. Mo dem. All right. Everyone say mo dem. Mo dem. Everyone say mo 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 dem. Mo 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 dem. The modem is a piece of hardware that acts as the phone connection inside or sometimes like this outside of your computer. We use it to connect to the internet. You want to make sure you have a modem. Next is the scanner. Everyone say, scanner. Scanner. The scanner works just like a copy machine. Only instead of copying one image from a piece of paper to another image on a piece of paper, the scanner actually converts the image into an electronic format and copies that paper to your computer screen. So basically, it's like a copier, but a copier copies one piece of paper to another piece of paper, and the scanner copies one piece of paper to your screen. Pretty cool. Now, this is called a floppy disk. Everyone say, floppy disk. Floppy disk. 
A floppy disk is one way that you can store information from your computer. As you can see, it's a small square disk. It can hold up to 1.44 megabytes of information. But don't worry about the amount of storage right now. In order to know why it's actually called floppy, since it doesn't look floppy at all, we're going to take one apart in a few minutes when we go into the Computer Craig Biology Laboratory. The next part is called a CD-ROM. Everyone say CD-ROM. CD-ROM. CD-ROM stands for Compact Disc Read Only Memory. And it looks just like the CDs that you have at home. That's right, Sammy. Just like your Patty Pop Star CD. Hey, I don't have a Patty Pop Star CD. That's not funny. It's my sister's. Really, it's my sister's. Just kidding, Sammy. Anyway, the CD-ROM is put into the CD-ROM drive, and it is played as games, programs, or music, depending on what type of information is on the CD-ROM. If it's a program, the program will come up. If it's Sammy's Patty Popstar CD, then his Patty Popstar songs will come up. Hey! Sorry, Sammy, couldn't hold back. Well, that's it for the computer parts. We have the ones I just went over, plus the ones we've already learned about. Remember those five? We had the keyboard. Keyboard! We had the meows. Meows! We had the monitor. Monitor! We had the central processing unit. Central Processing Unit! We had the printer. Printer! All right, that's all for computer parts and our computer party! I'll see you at the Computer Craig Biology Lab. Bye! Hello and welcome to the Computer Craig Biology Laboratory. The coolest place for computer experiments and best of all, computer dissections. Our lab assignment for today is to dissect a floppy diskette, also known as a floppy disk. Why do you think it's called floppy? Well, it doesn't look very floppy, and since it doesn't look floppy, most people have no idea why it's called a floppy disk. Well, in order to find out, I'm going to dissect it. Take it apart. But before we start, a quick warning. Don't try this at home. 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 If you take apart the disc, you will lose any information that you've saved on it. You won't be able to use the disc ever again. This disc is blank. There's no information on it, so I won't lose anything. Also, I'm carefully going to take it apart, just so you can see why it's called floppy. Remember, don't try this at home. All right, I'll just take this off, okay, and I think this might open up. And, all right. Oh, look what I found. I've discovered the floppy disk. It's actually floppy. We couldn't tell because it was in this hard case. Well, I guess another floppy disk dissection went pretty good. See, it's floppy. Flop, 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 flop. Well, that's it for our Computer Craig 
Biology Laboratory. See you next time. Flop. Just want to give a hey, hey, hey to all you computer dudes and chicks watching at home out there. My name is Big Idea Betty. Bib for short. It's my initials. Like, duh. Well, I've got a bib on, but I ain't no baby. But between you and I, I sure have been told I'm a babe. Holla back. So anyway, I'll be popping in at the end of all my buddy Computer Craig's videos to tell you about all the cool projects you will be completing. You know, like the big idea of the lesson? Like how do you think I got this name? Big idea? Big idea, buddy? Psh, whatever. So now for the projects. In this video, we have two. Number one, homemade swap the computer term game. And number two, computer basics, open and shut. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye. computer term game. This is a really fun game that will help you learn all the computer terms that we went over in this video. All you need is a marker, a large piece of paper or poster board, your computer cray workbooks, two fly swatters, hey, and a few friends. Take a few of the computer words that we just learned and write them in different spots on your piece of poster board like this. Then have two friends at a time stand next to each other holding a fly swatter each. Backs facing the poster board on the wall. Next have either a parent, babysitter, older brother, or sister read the definition and then say go. After they say go, the first to swat the correct term wins. The definitions are found in your computer Craig workbook. So for example, let's say you and your brother were playing the game together. You're both standing with your backs to the poster board waiting for your mom to read the definition. Next, you hear your mom say, The word I want you to swat is the computer part that has numbers, letters, and symbols on it and it gives the computer commands. Go! You and your brother both turn around real quick and whoever swats the word keyboard first wins. Good luck and have fun. All right. This project is called Open and Shut. My buddy CC Jr. is gonna help me out with this one. Hey CC Jr. Yes? I'm gonna talk about opening and closing programs and documents. And while I talk, I'd like you to use the computer to demonstrate. You got it, dude. Once your computer has been turned on and has finished booting up, you'll see on your computer screen the desktop. This is called the desktop, everyone. It is called the desktop because it is where you keep things that you use a lot. Like on a real desk. The things that I keep on top of my real desk are things that I use often, like my stapler, my tape, my paper clips, and the current book that I'm reading. If I don't use these things often, I wouldn't keep them on the desk. I'd put them in a drawer or a file cabinet. Same goes for the computer desktop. The pictures, called icons, each represent a program or file that I use a lot. If I have a program that I don't use a lot, I'll just keep it in a different part of my computer. But if I use it often, I'll put it right here on the desktop because it's quick and easy for me to get to. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how to open a program. There are a few different ways that you can open a program. If it's saved on your desktop, you can double click on it or click once on it and then hit the enter key on your keyboard. When I say double click, I mean click the left button on your mouse 
two quick times with the arrow button over the program you want to open. Like this. Click, click. That's right. And the way that most, if not all of your programs will be able to be opened is by clicking on the start button, then programs, then choosing the program that you want to use. Today we're going to open up a word processing program. I use Microsoft Word, which is the most popular. But if you have Microsoft Works, WordPerfect, or some other word processing program, you can use them too. So I'm going to click Start, Programs, then Microsoft Word. Now that it's open, let's talk about the three buttons that are at the top right corner of your screen. The first button is the Minimize button. If you click on the Minimize button on the left, it'll shrink down your program to the bottom of the screen. Don't worry, it's still here. You just click on it at the bottom of your screen and it opens right back up. If you click on the middle button, it will either maximize or restore your program window. If it's small, it'll maximize to the full size of the screen, and if it's at the full size of the screen, it will shrink it down to the smaller size. And the last button, all the way on the right, is the close button. It's represented by the letter X and if you click on it, your program will close. So for now, we won't close the program. Whoops! Did you close it? Uh, well, yes, but I remember how to open it up. Just click Start, then Programs, then Microsoft Word. All right, now we're going to do a little typing just for fun. CC Junior, would you do me a favor and type your name using the keyboard on the first line? First and last name? Yeah, that's fine. Well, I don't have a last name. Then why'd you ask? Just make one up. Okay. Well, then I'll type CC Junior Banana. That's a fruit, not a last name. Sure it is. It's my new last name. Well, okay. Now, let's say you decided to erase your last name, which you don't even have. If you did want to erase your last name, you would have to use the backspace button. Find the backspace button on your keyboard and hit it enough times to erase just your last name. Don't erase your first name. Alrighty then, backspace button. Oh, there it is. Now that you have your first name, let's go down to the next line and type in a number. How about the number eight? Yeah, that'll work. Go down to the next line and type the number 8. To go down to the next line, you need to hit the Enter button. Once you hit the Enter button, just hit the number 8 on the keyboard one time. Okay, I have my name on the first line and then the number 8 on the second line. Good. Now hit the Enter button again. Okay, on this line, I'd like you to hit a number between 1 and 100, any one that you want. Um, 57. Yeah, definitely. 57. Okay, now hit enter one more time. On the last line, I'd like you to type an animal. Any animal you like, but it's got to be in the plural form. Do you know what the word dog would be in the plural form? Uh, duh! You just add an S at the end. So it would be dogs. I'm going to type in the word elephants. They're really cool. Okay, am I done now? You sure are. Now read me what you wrote. Okay, it says CC Junior ate 57 elephants. CC Junior ate 57 elephants? <laughs> That's not funny, Computer Craig. I said it isn't funny. Sorry, buddy, I couldn't resist. Well, kids at home, give opening and closing programs a try, and we'll learn even more about Microsoft Word in the word processing video. Have fun, and don't forget, point and click your way to success!